Hello everybody, we're back again with Our Life, Beginnings and Noise. I know I said I was going to do another recording possibly tomorrow, but I managed to get some rest and feel better, so I decided to go ahead and uh, do another moment. So let's get into it. We are going to be doing family family moment. Let me get comfortable here. <coughs> okay. The sun warm your skin from the from its place in the sky. You close your eyes, enjoying the mix of the heat with the pleasant breeze that drifted past you. You and Lee had spread out a blanket on top of one of the hills behind your house and had been relaxing there for a while now. Oh, so our cousin Lee's here visiting, all right. Lee had come over earlier in the day, and while a range of activities ha had been discussed from s staying home to heading down to the beach, a uh, picnic on the hill had been the choice you both settled on. A small sped <clears throat> was laid out in front of you. Some bottled water, soft drinks, as well as chips and sliced fruit. You sat up and reached for a snack, listening to Lee talk about the musical she had gotten to see a few days ago. <laughs> it was unbelievable. There was singing dancing and crazy stunts and it was all done live right in front of my face says Lee so now I take it Lee is our, the same age as us maybe I'm not sure but anyway she's the only like uh, girl that uh, that we're pretty much friends with I mean we barely even get along with our sister, so, you know. Maybe one day we could go together. I've got to see more shows like that. He smiled at Lee's enthusiasm, knowing how much she enjoyed singing and performing. And she was good at it, too. You had gotten the chance to hear her sing a couple tunes, and you knew she put a lot of effort into it. I'm gonna go with the second one. You also like to sing and had talent of your own. It just means it was pretty much it, it's pretty much a hobby for for him my character I mean he's not gonna go it's not even gonna go per, per, perform uh, as a professional or something like that it's more of a hobby it was nice to nice uh, it was the it was nice the two of you could share that interest I wonder if maybe we could put on our own show think of how fun it it be says Lee we could perform our for our parents and ask our friends and some other people to come and watch too 
I to it totally works. Um, I'm gonna go with the third one. Sure, I'll give it a go. <clears throat> it wasn't something you r really thought about before, but Lee wanted to do it and wanted to do it then you could at least give it a shot. Knee clapped in excitement and bounced on the balls of her feet behind happy beyond happy that you were on board with her idea. Woo! I'm gonna sing. Do you wanna too? Or maybe do something else. Yeah, I'll sing to you. Cool. We'll perform an incredible duet. Is there anything else coming to your head? One more thing. I'll dance. Okay. We can pick a, an upbeat song that that way you know, it'll be easy for you to move. Is there anything else that's coming to your head? Mm, one more thing. Let's see, I'll write the song. No, I don't think I want to do any stunts. No, I'll pick the outfits. That's great. That's a great job for you. You always dress so fashionably, says Lee. I think that'll uh, make an amazing show. You got things pretty covered. The two of you ran back to your house to grab the supplies you needed. Dodging your mom's amused questions before heading back out to the blanket to get started. You stuffed a bag full of assorted clothes and accessories to create the outfits for the show, or at least get a start on it. Lee and you dis discussed the plans in detail, <clears throat> selling on a song first and then practicing out parts for the show. The afternoon passed quickly, the sun dropping lower and lower in the sky. And after having thoughtfully worked out how the show was going to go, you decided to take a break. Oh! Oh, you know, we should have invited Cove to watch us practice our show. He could tell us if it's bad before we put, put on the real thing. I'm gonna go with the first one. That's smart. We could ask him to watch us later. Okay, says Lee. It's too bad Derek isn't in the neighborhood today. I like him. Says Lee. Uh, I'm gonna go with the second. I really like him too. I know you would. But speaking of boys, we like. What's the relationship status between you and Cove? Is it good? Yeah, that's good. Ah, oh, I'm happy. I'm happy for you, says Lee. But, like, really, are you gonna tell? Be, be telling him you have a crush on him anytime soon or what? I'm 
I'm gonna go with the this one right here. I'm pretty sure he already knows. Like he kind of senses it, I think. <clears throat> pretty sure isn't sure. You should declare it to him. Yeah, we should tell him at some point. You mumbled something incoherent and she gave you a pointed look. I think that's something you'd probably be kind of afraid of. Like, okay, how's this person gonna take it? Is he gonna accept me having a crush on him? Uh, is he gonna say, yeah, I feel the same way, yeah, so on and so forth. It's a touchy subject. So, but it's always good to, to come out and say how you feel to the person and see how they feel to know how things are working out between the two of you. You mumbled something incoherent and she gave you a pointed look. You know that he, he has a crush on you too. It's obvious for him. It's obvious for you. Why not just do it? Yeah, it does seem like he does have a crush on us. He hasn't, you know, kind of uh, said anything about it. He's probably embarrassed too. He's probably like, uh, I don't know if I should say anything. Whatever, you know. He's probably just waiting for us, maybe, to say something. You didn't say anything, wondering about the possibilities instead. The two of you talked a, lo a little more about Cove among us, the other topics, and you found that it was nice having someone to speak with about these sorts of things. <clears throat> Finally, both Finally, you both decided to pack everything up and head back home for the evening. Lee talked excitedly about the show as you did, and you thought back on what you had already accomplished for it. You could definitely do with a little more practice, but what you had so far was a solid foundation for the performance. <clears throat> Upon walking through the front door, you were met by your moms and Elizabeth, hovering around each other in the living room. Touching hung thick in the air as the three of them turned to you and Lee. Frowning slightly, you had interrupted something. Exactly what you weren't sure. Wow, who died? What's going on? You looked between. You said nothing. Oh, hello. Um, what's going on? Your moms looked at each other wondering which one of them was going to speak first. Eventually, Mom cleared her throat and spoke. Oh. We're just having a talk with your sister. The room fell quiet again, with no one quite knowing what to say. <clears throat> you felt incredibly awkward. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. But the silence didn't last long. You didn't have to stop just cut because uh, just cause those two are here. There's no reason to try keeping it a secret, says Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth was mad with her arms folded defensively over her chest, but your mom's nodded in agreement with her. Well... Elizabeth was, asked, was asking about her parents, her biological ones, says mom. The world spun around you at the news. You couldn't understand why was this happening now. When you glanced at Lee, she stuffed her, shuffled her feet uncomfortably as though she didn't know if she would be there or not anymore. You didn't know either. Your moms had always been open and honest about the fact that neither of them had given birth to you or your sister, but the details hadn't been fully explained before. It made sense that Elizabeth didn't know a lot about her biological parents and wanted to know more. You just hadn't ever thought you'd accidentally stumble onto it. Elizabeth looked at your parents expectantly. <clears throat> she wasn't going to let the unintentional interruption derail things. We don't want to keep that information from either of you. It's your right to know your past. But we did not we we did want to wait until you asked us to hear your, to hear yourselves, says Mom. Well it's happening now, so says Elizabeth. Your mom's shared a nervous glance, yet Ma took a quick breath before speaking again. I adopted you from the Philippines when you were just a baby, says Mom. Elizabeth dropped her arms, her eyebrows sh shooting upwards in surprise. <gasps> Wait, I wasn't born here, says Elizabeth. No. No, you weren't, says Mom. You could clearly see what your sister was was appalled by this inform by this information. You s struggled even more with that to do or how to react. I am going to have to pass. Am I going to have to pass a test to even be a citizen? Asked Elizabeth. No. No. You were adopted into the country. We took care of things. You're already a citizen. You have nothing to worry about, says Mom. I followed the laws when it came to bringing a child into the U.S. Nothing can be held against you, says Mom. <clears throat> Elizabeth sighed. Placed. Placed. Placed? Yeah, placed. With uh, information, but still far from happy. Who were my parents? As people, why did they put me up for adoption in the first place? Asked Elizabeth. Ma softly, softly put her hands over Elizabeth's shoulder, trying to provide some support before she gave her... The answer I'm is, so sorry. I'm so sorry, sweetie. Your parents were reported to have died. They didn't go into details on specifics of how, but you were an orphan. I wish we had better news for you, Elizabeth, says Mom. Elizabeth was torn between emotions. Her eyes filled with tears as she threw her hands in the air settling on enraged great so i can never meet them even if i wanted to not that i could have anyway since they live in another part of the world when they were still alive 
says Elizabeth. Elizabeth turned her back on you and your moms and stormed off, sprinting up the stairs to her room before before anyone could stop her. Okay, so both of us were adopted by our two moms. Uh, Elizabeth is now just finding out about it, so yeah, I can understand why that would be upsetting, or it would kind of be sad to even find out, oh, my parents are dead, my real parents are dead, I can't, I can't find out about it, anything about them. So yeah. I have to go and talk to her, says Ma. Ma immediately started to follow her, but Mom gently held her by the arm and shook her head. Mm. We should give her a little space to process it all, says Mom. Your mom's, your mom's head hung low, but she stopped walking. With Elizabeth now gone, the two of them seemed to remember you and Lee were still standing awkwardly off to the side. I'm sorry you had to see all that. It's not how I expected it would have happened when the time came. Well, there was really no good time. I mean, the stuff comes out, it's gonna be, you know, tough. But since it's the topic of the day, Chippy, is there anything you'd like to ask? <clears throat> you deserve to know after all, says Mom. Lee pat patted your back and gave you a supportive look. Yeah, I want to know. Your parents both nodded in sync to your reply, ready to talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can leave if you want. If you want to have things be private, mm -hmm. I want you. I want you to be here. It's good to have some support in a, in a time like this. So. Since your cousin is there, you might as well get some kind of support, you know. I mean, other than our moms. I know our moms support us, our, you know, so. But it's always good to have somebody else on the side to support, you know what I mean? I can do that, says Lee. Lee shifted a little closer to you in support, and you were glad to have her there with you. It made you feel a little stronger somehow. Yeah, see, that that's why I would pick that, because it's always good to have some kind of support, you know, on the side. You turn to face your parents again, preparing yourself for what they were about to tell you. Mom was the first to speak, her voice quivering with emotion. You were adopted as a baby, but two years after two years after Elizabeth, we used a different organization at that time. And you were adopted within the US. <sighs> Okay, so we were born in U.S., so we don't have to worry about that. We weren't born in, a, born in another country like Elizabeth, but all right. We're sorry to tell you, Chippy, your parents had also passed away, and no other family member took you in, if there were any. That's why we wanted to, to wait until you asked. We didn't want to suddenly drop that in your lap we wanted you to be prepared says mom I'm sorry. sorry we're sorry Chippy says mom Lee gave you a reassuring squeeze 
on the arm to show to show to show you she was there for you. I think I would be emotional at that point. Uh, you started to cry. A lump formed in your throat, just as warm as warm as warm tears started falling over your cheeks. You wiped them away with the back of your hand, sniffling quietly. Thank you for listening, Chippy says, Mom. If there's anything else you want to know, all you have to do is ask. We'll do our best to answer any questions you have, says Mom. Are you okay? How are you feeling now? Are you going to be okay, says Mom. Lee watched you closely as though judging how exactly she should react to what was going on. You continued to cry. Yeah. Your eyes were swollen from the tears, but you just couldn't find it in you to stop more from falling. Your mom's looked just as sad as though the tears might start for them at any moment. Yeah, it is kind of a sad moment. Really. No one seemed to have any words after that. Okay. I think I'd want to go see Cove because I think he would be even supportive too because it's always good to have the uh, somebody you uh, really like support you in a situation like this. And we've been there for Cove so I'm pretty sure he would be there for us as well. So yeah. Let's go see Cove. More than anything in the moment, you wanted to see Cove. No one could be there for you the way he could. Yeah, because we at this point we're really feeling close to him, so so yeah. And we've been there for him, so I'm sure he would be there for us as well. <clears throat> you turned on your heel without another word and headed towards the, the front door. Lee's footsteps echoed from behind and you knew she was following you. I'm gonna stay... I'm gonna go with the first one. You can stay, Lee. Can, uh, can you stay, Lee? I wanna go by myself. I want to talk to Cove by myself. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll wait for you here, but I really hope you be all right, Chippy. Once outside, you strut across the street, purposely, uh, purpose, purposely, purpose. Corpus fully Coe's house set in your sights. After you raised a hand to knock on the door, it took a few minute a few moments for Mr. Cove Holden to answer it, giving you a broad smile. Cliff's face fell suddenly. You could tell something was wrong, but didn't say anything else. Instead, he looked back towards the hallway where you knew Cole's room was located. Cove, Chippy is here, says Cove's dad. After calling for his son, he turned back to you. <clears throat> with an encouraging thumbs up. <clears throat> he, 
He won't be long, says Carl's dad. As promised, it didn't take long for before footsteps echoed down the hall, and Carl's head of uh, green hair appeared before you all. He looked ahead to see you standing there, and when his eyes widened, you guessed he had noticed you had been crying. Chippy? asked Cove. Cove pushed past his dad to stand with you outside the door, watching you with concern echoed all over his face. You kids be safe. If you need anything, you know where to find me, says Cove's dad. He gave you kind of kind of smile before softly shutting shutting the door shutting the front door, giving you some privacy. Cove stepped closer still and spoke cautiously. What's, What's wrong? wrong? What's wrong, says Cove. Um, the last one. My parents are dead. Cove froze at your outburst, except for his mouth, which fell open. My biological ones, before my mom's adopted me. Without having to say anything else, Cove reached out and pulled you into a tight embrace. His familiar warmth enveloping you. Yeah, I knew he would do that. I was hoping he would do that anyway. I'm sorry, Chippy, says Cove. His words whispered comfortly into your shoulder. You started to cry. You pressed your face into the crock of his neck, unable to stop the tears. The hold he had on you tightened. Can we talk somewhere else? You felt uncomfortable huddling around the entrance of Ko's house. That feeling didn't seem to be a problem though. Yeah, says Cove. Cove took you by the arm and encouraged you along behind him. You followed without protest. You headed towards the hills where you and Lee had spent the majority of your day. Okay, how come we were back there and it looked like the sun was still out and now we're down here by the on the hill close to the beach and now this is getting dark all of a sudden that was quick okay that was quick I mean that's just weird okay just saying things seem so different then a couple hours ago you wondered how everything had changed so drastically he took a seat in the gra grass beside Cove, who bent his uh, he bent his legs and rested his arms on them before he turned to you again. Mm. Can you explain everything to me? Asked Cove. You nodded softly before talking in he heavy breath and launched into the story. Cove sat quietly and listened attentively, attentively, uh, nodding every now and then or taking in a shock inhale. You took a long time, it took a long time for you to relay the details. Dozens of stars were pinpointed in the sky as the night wore on. Silence settled between you and as Cove sat quietly for a moment con con 
contempt, con contemplating everything you had said. When he finally spoke, his voice was quiet, drifting through the night towards you. Cove. Uh, okay, Chippy. Chippy. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. I'm really sorry about what happened to your parents. So, so sorry, says Cove. He stopped suddenly and took in a deep, sharply breath, and you got the impression he was struggling with what was the right what was right to say. Uh, I'm gonna go with the first one. I'm sad I'll never get to know them. I'll never find out what they're doing or what they're they're like as people it's just all gone chippy you're not doing anything wrong you know that right i think you can be as sad as you want for as long as you need or you can feel okay about it whenever you want to. <clears throat> he sighed and ran a hand through his ha hair as he looked out over the ocean. It's okay. it's okay. I guess what I'm trying to say is whatever you feel about it is how you feel about it. You don't have to force yourself to be different, says Cove. cried in, in relief. His words meant a lot of sense. You knew that despite everything you were going through, you would be okay. Even as the tears slowly rolled down your face, that th thought comforted you. Cove smiled at you a little and you could tell he was trying to be comforting. And your moms definitely don't. It doesn't matter if you're not blood related. You're definitely family. I can see that. And I hope you can too. You felt the reassurance of his eyes. You stayed up the, the hill together a little longer, looking out over the ocean and the stars that shone brightly ab above it. After talking about the situation with someone who wasn't directly a part of it, you started to see things in a different light. Above all, you were glad to have Ko's support and to know you could count on him if you needed it. Hey, oh, Elizabeth is here, okay. The sudden voice of your sister behind you made you jump. <clears throat> you saw her standing a little way away. She walked closer and you didn't quite know what to do or what she was planning on saying. So? Would you mind going? I want to talk to Chip. Talk to just Chippy. You can come back. It's not going to be forever or anything, says Elizabeth. Cole seemed equal parts concerned and skeptical. Leaving now wasn't a concept that thrilled him. You can't ask that. 
Chippy, please. This is private, says Elizabeth. Elizabeth gave you a hard stare, and eventually you relented. You wanted, you waited to, until the two of you were alone before fixing her, her, her with a ca cautious stare. Elizabeth folded her arms, looking you over. Did moms tell you about your parents too? Says, asked Elizabeth. Yeah, my my birth parents also died. Elizabeth broke con contact after that. Sorry. Sorry, says Elizabeth. Why did you want to talk to me? Elizabeth raised her eyebrow at the question as though the answer should ha should be obvious. I was worried about you. I was the one who brought, brought it up, but I made you deal with whatever was left when I was gone, says Elizabeth. She sighed, glancing upwards for a moment before settling on you once more. I wanted to ask you what happened without everyone breathing down our necks. Thank you for thinking of me. She stuck her nose up a little at that, but her smile was soft. All of this, it upset me. She slipped back into a scroll. I'm sorry, Chippy. It's a pretty depressing to topic. Yeah. You have to be born in the U.S. to become president, says Elizabeth. What? You had never heard that dream of hers before. She knows you're a blaffle, blafflement, and could continue. <sighs> I get. I was never going to be president, but it just feels weird having stuff taken away, not even getting a chance at it, says Elizabeth. I don't like having to know that when I was born, I was going to have complete, a complete, completely different life. So different, I can't even think about what it looked like in my head. I could have spoken a different language, lived away from every everything I've ever seen here, had someone else as my sibling, and then my parents died, and I was adopted, and the life I got became a total new thing forever. I can't back, go back to what it was, even if I wanted to. A heaviness settled between you and the person who became your sister. You knew exactly how she felt. Confusing, it was a confusing feeling to have lived one way for as long as you can remember, but not having it be what was originally yours. Elizabeth watched you seriously. 
she was still trying to make sense of this to you and herself. Mm -hmm. I don't know why today was the day. Nothing came up to make me ask the question. It was something I've had in my head for a while, says Elizabeth. When it was just me and moms in the living room, I just kind of said it, finally, and there you go. She shifted from one foot to another, relaxing her stance just a bit. She also spoke more gently. Learning about them and what happened doesn't change how I feel about our family, Chippy. She smirked, fixing you with sharp eyes. I'd already figured a long time ago that moms weren't our biological parents. That wasn't news. See. It really doesn't change anything? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Says Elizabeth. Nothing about the family I was first born, born in would have made me decide that this wasn't my family anymore. If you had hoped you'd be free of my big sister, Lee Stash, you don't don't think you're so lucky. She bumped her shoulder against yours playfully. Her lips tilted at the corners. He'll, He'll always, always be, be my little, little brother. brother. Thank you for saying that, Elizabeth. It's good when I don't have to read all the lines. I'm gonna hug her. It took a few seconds, but she gave you a quick squeeze in return. You'll always be my family too. Chuckling, she seemed pleased with how the conversation had gone in that in the end. Really Ready to head back home? It's been a long day. Says, <clears throat> says Elizabeth. You gave her a nod. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. Come on, you two. Let's go. Says Elizabeth. You walked home together in a comfort in comfortable silence down the well-worn street. The familiar, familiar of it all felt nice. When you stepped through the door, you found your moms quietly sitting together at the kitchen table. Their heads snapped up and they got to their feet to meet you, Ma giving you a cheerful smile. We're so glad to see you, says Mom. I'm sorry for walk walking away before. That's all right, says. That's all right, sweetheart, says Mom. We're just happy to have you here again. Ma then came over and wrapped her arms around you and Elizabeth giving you a tight hug. It didn't take long for Mom to join in, putting her arms around the both of you. Uh -huh. Love, you. Love you. We really couldn't have asked for better kiddos. We love you, says Mom. More 
than we could ever say, says Mom. Uh. Moms, says Elizabeth. You smiled at their comfort. Sure. You were glad your moms were all all right. I love you too. You let uh, you let them hug you for as long as they needed, and it was a nice moment shared between you. They both pulled back eventually and grinned at the two of you. You were, you and you, and you uh, knew then that you were, that you all had each other, and you always would. Hey, I hope you are all right, says Lee. He came up towards you, a soft smile plastered on her face. And are you okay? Elizabeth asked Lee. Elizabeth rolled her eye, her eyes. Fine. Elizabeth rolled her eyes and huffed a breath. And you knew she wasn't used to showing her vulnerable side. Fine. I'm doing fine, says Elizabeth. Lee nodded, though you couldn't tell she didn't quite believe her. <sighs> Ma, now, since we're all here, okay, well, since we're all here, how about we do something together as a family? Asked Ma. That sounds like an excellent idea. We should have some fun before the night's over. Yeah, to kind of calm down the situation and just bring it to a, a, a better ending, sort of. Yeah. Totally! I love the sound of that, says Lee. Okay. Cove looked a little bashful, like likely over the being included as a part of the family. <coughs> but he tried not to pay much attention to it. Why not? Asked Elizabeth. You hid a smile that threatened to tilt your lips, knowing that Elizabeth must have been in a good move if she hadn't even te teased Co for being part of it. And no matter what she could have could have said said about it, you wanted him to be the be here. He was someone who was really important to you. Who's got a suggestion? Asked Mom. It should be something we can do here in the house with everyone everyone in the, the same room, says Ma. You suddenly remembered the show you and Lee had been working on earlier. Uh, maybe we can do, do our show? Oh. oh, a show. This is the first time we're hearing about hearing of this. I'm intrigued, says Mom. Wonderful. Wonderful. It would be amazing if you put it on for us to watch, says Mom. Oh yeah, I need to see what you've cooked up, says Elizabeth. That'd be cool, says Cove. 
He smiled at Lee, who returned the gesture while bouncing on her heels in excitement. Take some seats and we'll get everything together, says Lee. Uh, your mom's collected the chairs from around the dining table and set them in row in a row in the living room where there was enough space for the show. While they did that, <coughs> while they did that, you and Lee quickly gathered the su supplies you needed and rehearsed the, the plan one last time. You listened through the song you had chosen one last time. You also took a moment to cycle through the dance moves you had planned. Funny you cha changed into the outfits you had picked out. When the two of you returned to the living room, everyone was sitting and ch chatting amongst themselves while they waited. The group quiet, quieted down when you and Lee stood in front of them on your makeshift stage. Lee was buzzing quietly with excitement beside you. Self-voicing Self enabled. The group, the group quieted, quieted down when you and Lee stood in front of them on your makeshift stage. Lee was, Lee was buzzing quietly with excitement beside, beside you. Self-voicing self disabled. Thank you. I don't know how the hell that come out. Okay. You were pumped for the show. The time you and Lee had put into practicing was worth it. You were ready to go. Okay, so welcome to our show. We only came up with it today, but we promise it'll be good, says Lee. No refunds. Yeah, I'm gonna go with no refunds. <laughs> Laughter ripped through the mini audience. Then you nodded at Lee that you were ready to begin. Lee took a deep breath, waiting the few beats it took to get into the song and started singing. Your part of the song joined in just a few moments later and you smiled at each other as you sang together. The dance moves you, you had practiced with, uh, with the tempo of the song. Your mom's outfits gave a special element to the performance. When the performance was over, Lee, Lee took your hand in hers, and the two of you bowed deeply together.
everyone gave you a round of applause and cheered for an encore when you started uh, straightened yourself up you were happy to see even though Elizabeth was clapping for you bravo bravo says mom good job, good job. you're so talented says mom your family rose from their seats and came over to congratulate you more directly. You were beaming from ear to ear. <clears throat> Cove was the first one to approach, stepping up to you and Lee with a smile on his face. It's nice. It's nice. Nice job, says Cove. Thank you, says Lee. You're really a great dancer, Chippy. It was cool, says Cove. It was pretty good, huh? And you're humble, too, says Cove. Enough to get her feeling as light as a feather. <clears throat> hey, were you the the one who picked the clothes? Asked Cove. Yeah, it was me. Cove smiled in content over his art, his 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 guess being correct. <sighs> Give me a moment. Not bad. Not bad. I thought so. It was good, says Cove. You couldn't help but feel flattered that he could recognize your talent so easily. Your parents gushed about how great everything was and thanked you for sharing it with them. Elizabeth was complimentary yeah, complimentary uh, in her own way, although she described the show as cute, which you knew she meant as kind of kitty. You laughed it off, however, you were just happy that everyone had a nice time. In that moment, you could have been more, couldn't have been more pleased to be a part of the family you had. And there we go, that's the end of it. That's the end of the moment of family. Our next moment will, will be dinner and I will do that tomorrow since I'm kind of running out of time and my uh, hubby is going to be home pretty soon so might as well save it right there. Okay so Thanks again for watching uh, my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that like button, and don't for to, don't forget to click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And uh, also, don't forget to uh, if you can go to my Patreon, check out my Patreon, and uh, become a Patreon contributor to my Patreon, so that I can uh, donate that money to a worthy charity. I'm planning on donating to local worthy charities. So I won't be seeing a dime of it. I won't be seeing even a penny of it. It will go directly to charity. Okay. Also, I'm running a um, uh, I'm running a, a new um, thing that I'm doing. Um, going to be doing is uh, it just started to. Um, 
it's if you become a, uh, con a contribute a twenty-five dollar contributor on my Patreon, then I will be giving you a sticker or a button pin with a picture of me in fursuit, and it will also say on there thanks for contributing. Or thanks for for becoming a VIP contributor. Yeah, something like that. So, if you have the time, if you can, and you can uh, do that, I would really appreciate it. I've been really trying really hard to get people to come and uh, contribute to my Patreon, so that um, we, so that we can give back to the community, to much needed charities, you know. So I'd really appreciate it if you can do that. And I thank you. And I will see you later.